Hi, I'm Sarah, and today I'm going to be showing you how to administer intramuscular injections or IM injections. Basically, they're going to be going into your muscle. Um, we typically use this method for testosterone, estradiol, or Depo-Provera. Uh, you can use it for um, other medications, so if you are using another medication, it's the same concept. Um, so you can still watch this video. Um, you're going to want to start out with a clean area, so go ahead and clean your table off and get the clutter away. And then after that, you're going to want to pull up your sleeves, so that way you're not going to get your hands dirty. If you have hair or bangs, you might want to pin them back, so that way they stay out of your face while you're doing this, so you're not tempted to touch your face or your hair. Um, and then once you're done with that, you're going to want to clean your hands. Uh, you can use soap and water, obviously, at the sink, or you can use hand sanitizer, which is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and get my hands clean. And then I'm going to set up my area um, with my supplies in the order that I'm going to be using them. So that way it's kind of like an assembly line and I'm not going to miss a step. So first, we're going to start off with some alcohol wipes. And then you're going to need your needle and syringe, your medicine and a band-aid. Uh, then what I usually tell people do is clean the area that you're going to be administering this shot into. Um, that way it has time to dry while you're doing the rest of it and you don't have to wait for it to dry. It's a little bit more time efficient. Um, but if something does end up falling on that area or touching that area, you are going to have to clean it again, obviously, which is not a big deal. You just want to wait for it to dry so that way it doesn't hurt when you're putting that needle into your body part because alcohol will sting that area. Um, for IM injections, you can put them um, into your thigh, which is what I'm going to be doing today because it just seems like the easiest way to administer that type of medication um, to yourself anyways. You can give it to yourself in your shoulder. I will take this off and show you guys. So you can put it right here pretty much um, where you get all the other vaccines usually like the flu vaccine and all other medications. Um, or you can put it in the upper outer area of your buttocks. Um, I will link a photo in the description showing you this uh, so you know exactly where to go for that if that's your desired location. Um, now because I touched my jacket, I'm going to go ahead and hand sanitize again. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean my thigh. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. It's important to not go back and forth when you're cleaning because it's just going to be like pushing the dirt around. You're not actually going to be cleaning anything. You're going to want to go in a spiral. So that way it's always your clean going into your dirty. Let me bring it down here so you can see me do this. So you'll see my red dot here from a previous video. Ignore that. But you're going to start in the center and you're just gonna spiral out. And I'm gonna want you to clean a big area. Um, so that way you know you're going into clean skin when you give that injection. Because if you just did like a tap, like a little bit, the odds of you hitting that spot is pretty slim. So if you clean like your whole top of your thigh, you're gonna go into somewhere clean. Now that that's done, you go ahead and get your medicine. When you first get it, it's gonna have a cap on it that you'll just pop off. After that, that lid's not going to go on it, so you're going to have to clean it for 30 seconds um, every single time that you use it. So go ahead and clean it. I've already cleaned this because I'm filming a couple videos back to back about different vaccines, so this might not be a full 30 seconds. I haven't touched the top of this, and I don't think you guys want to sit here and watch me um, clean a vial for 30 seconds. Uh, and then what you're going to do is you're going to want to open up your packages. First, we'll start with your syringe because that's going to open up at your plunger. And usually it doesn't open that badly. Um, so it opens up at the plunger, so it's um, okay to touch. 
this end you're not going to want to touch uh because that's going to touch the needle and it will get bacteria in side of the needle inside of the syringe and then inside of you and then you can get an infection um so you can go ahead and just keep that in your packaging for right now place it down and then you're going to open up your needle sometimes these packages are nice and they give you arrows on where you want to open them at sometimes they don't it's kind of also self-explanatory so you can see there's not really much to like grab here to peel apart but up here there's a lot more to grab so you'll just go ahead and open that up now this opens to this bit where you do not want to touch it um because again that hole is leading to your needle so if you touch it bacteria will get in there inside of you and then you get an infection so don't touch it you're gonna just hold that. You're gonna take your plunger out, or your syringe, I mean, and this is gonna go in between those two circles. And then you'll just spin a little, and then you're good. If you have this guy, go ahead and pull that down so it's not in your way. And then for this, you will pull up some air. Now, if you are doing testosterone, I usually recommend pulling up a half a milliliter of air every time just to make your life easier. Um, testosterone is very thick and hard to pull up, so putting more air in that vial will just make your life a little bit easier. But for all other medications, it's a lot more liquidy uh, and you don't need that much pressure in there. So you want to pull up to what the amount of um, medicine you need. So if you need 0.2 milliliters, draw up 0.2 amounts of air. If you need one milliliter, pull up one milliliter of air. So I can show you how this works. This right here is zero. And then you have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0.5 or half. And mine is a three milliliter syringe. So you can see it goes all the way to three. And I'm gonna go ahead and give myself 0.5 milliliters today of my normal saline. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up. For this, if yours has a, um, has a hump on it, you're measuring at the bottom of the hill, not that top part, but the bottom. Um, if it's flat, then it's self-explanatory. You're just gonna to measure to the bottom of, or the tip of the plunger. Um, so I have my 0.5 which is hard to see because my numbers are black and my tip of my plunger is black, but it, it's 0.5 of air. You can go ahead and uncap your needle, take your medicine and put it in the squishy middle part. Go ahead and put that air in there, tip it upside down and go ahead and pull out how much medicine you need. Again, I need 0.5. Um, for testosterone, again, because it's thick, you can go ahead and pull all the way down to that three and don't pull any further because the plunger will come out. Um, and you can watch it slowly trickle in. Um, if it stops trickling in and you still need more medication, you can then just push that air back up, pull back, and you're gonna wanna make sure that your needle's in the medicine because if it's not in the medicine, then you're just gonna get air, obviously. Um, and then if you have any air bubbles, you just need to uh, flick them. I don't know if I can get you to see this. Never really wants to focus. But there is a bubble at the bottom here that you can kind of sort of see. Um, so you'll just flick it until it gets to the top. Um, if this hurts your finger, no big deal. You can get a pen and just kind of tap it. And then if there is some bubbles that are just being stubborn and don't want to go up there, it's not a huge deal. Um, if, as long as they're not like a huge gap of air, like um, you can see here, my medicine is here and then you have like that whole medicine. So like if you have magically had a giant bubble that big down here, you're gonna wanna keep flicking it until that's up. But some bubbles in here, it's not gonna be a big deal. It's not like the movies. Um, you need a lot of air to kill you and it's not going into your veins, so you're gonna be fine. Um, so once I have all the air up top, I'm gonna go ahead and push this until my plunger meets at the 0.5 mark. And then I'm gonna tip it back upside, right side up. 
Now you can see I've used this too many times and I've put too much air in it. So it's trying to suck up air now. That's why it's important to not use more air than you need unless it's testosterone. Um, so I'm going to kind of quickly take that out. There you go. And the reason why I tell you to take it out when it's like this is because if you take it out when it's upside down, obviously when you take it out, the squishy bit is not going to instantly close. Um, and it will leak a little bit of your medicine and you don't want to do that. Um, now that that's done, you're ready to give the injection. Um, my needle is one inch. I'm on the smaller side, so I'm going to be using a one inch. Sometimes they will give you a one and a half inch. Sometimes they only come with one and a half inch because it will come pre-drawn up with a needle. And so you kind of have no choice. Um, it's not a big deal. It's still going to be going into muscle. Um, once you're in the muscle, it's not going to hurt no matter, like if you go too deep, if you go, you're not going to go too deep, but it's not going to hurt the deeper you go into the muscle. It's already in muscle. It's already going to hurt. Um, so let me go ahead and move you down. And like I said, as long as nothing has touched your thigh, you are good to go. And what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you, of course, relax your leg. You're gonna pinch all this fat up here because it's just gonna make you, like that pinch is going to cause a little bit of pressure and pain itself, which will make the needle hurt a little less. And you're just gonna to wanna to go straight in. And then you can go ahead and administer your medication slowly. And you're gonna to want to undo your pinch and then take your needle out. Now, if it's hard for you to push in, like if you have that thick medication like testosterone, um, you can, while you're, um, once you've put the needle all the way in, you can, un you can stop pinching, hold the plunger steady, and that way you can have more um, control and be able to put more pressure on this plunger with your other hand. Um, if you have this, you can go ahead and flip it up to protect yourself from poking you from a needle. It will go further than this, but I'm not going to use it. So that way I can show you how to recap in case you don't have one. Because um, that could be um, a little dangerous if you don't do it right. So you're going to want to go in straight and slow. Um, because if you go in at an angle, believe it or not, this needle is sharp. It can go through the cap if you go in at an angle. Um, and if you go in too fast and too hard, because it does, I don't know if you heard that, there is a click. Um, while you're pushing that in, if you push way too hard and your finger's right here, it can go through the cap, split it, and then poke you again. So again, touch the sides only, go in slow and straight. And then once you, the way that you want to dispose of this is, um, either use a milk jug or a, deter a laundry detergent jug, something that's hard and plastic so that the needles don't, um, can't really puncture through that easily. So that way you don't get hurt. Uh, it's also important to make sure that that jug is up higher on a shelf, um, maybe even write sharps on it so people know that it's not a milk jug. Um, and then it's all, again, it's up high so that way kids can't get to it and accidentally hurt themselves. Now, if you're bleeding, obviously, that's when you're going to want to put on that band-aid. I'm not bleeding, so I'm not going to. Don't want to waste uh, clinic supplies if I don't need to. Um, and you're pretty much done. Um, once that jug is full of the needles and syringes, you can bring it back to your provider to get rid of it appropriately. Um, we don't mind that. And I hope you learned something, enjoyed this, and have a good day.